Hey there, darling. Good morning. Welcome back to Return Refuge Farm. I was actually in the middle of milking the goats. I came out here on the f this morning. I was on the phone with my mother. I didn't bring my camera. And then she and I got off the phone and I was milking and I thought I should go grab my camera and bring my buddies out here with me. Uh, they're like, what's going on? <laughs> Where did you go? They're very confused. I messed up our routine, so I got to get back to it. Hey, okay, okay. Let's get back on. Let's get back on track. Your turn, Claire. So I got hit the last few days with what is unfortunately pretty yearly occurrence, which is like this terrible allergic reaction to all of the pollen. Um, and it, you know, I'm always nervous at first when I start feeling sickly. I don't want to get real sick, but it became very apparent that it was indeed just sinus crud. So I sound pretty rough. I don't feel great, but I'm also, you know, okay, we persevere. Maya actually milked for me the other day um, after the market, because that's when it first came on. I was feeling really bad. And I just took a hot bath and went to bed and have largely just been trying to support my immune system and stay really hydrated and rested. And hopefully um, it won't last very long. Last year I lost my voice really bad for about a week during the pollening and every year I'm optimistic maybe this time it'll be different and it never is last night um, we got home kind of late and so Jeremiah and I were both out here he's milking cows I'm milking goats and I was I felt like a half zombie and I was sitting there thinking about it and I was like telling myself, Jess, you want this, you love this, you want it more than anything. I think that in farming or homesteading or whatever you're going to do, if you're going to have animals and plants and stuff that you have to show up for even when you don't feel good, it sometimes occasionally requires reminding yourself how much you want it. <laughs> So the milk today is actually going to the pigs uh, because I've got like four or five gallons in there that I need to do something with. I think I'm going to fill my freeze dryer and freeze dry, which that'll only be like five quarts, how much my freeze dryer runs. And then I'm going to make some cheese and I may freeze dry the cheese after that and try to put some of this up for later. So my thought is, is if I have the milk freeze dried, then when the time comes that I have to dry the goats off for after they're rebred, that I'll be able to use that like in my coffee and stuff. That's the main place that I miss having milk when I don't have any is whenever I drink my coffee in the morning. But um, with me not feeling great, I haven't been in the kitchen hardly at all. I mean, and I haven't made much of anything, so I've got quite like a back backlog of milk so i just this morning i've got jars i need to wash i've got milk i need to process so i took the gallon that i got this morning i fed the baby goat and then with the gallon that was left i just put it in the pig bucket i hate doing that but i have to remind myself like in the permaculture mindset that like nothing is wasted and it all goes back into the cycle of the farm that's not wasting like when we have to take excess cow's milk or we skim the cream and we take the skim and we put it on the chicken food or we put it on the pig's food it's not wasting we're just putting that and we're applying that resource into a different place than we normally do it's not like we're throwing it out i mean even if we go pour it into the soil of the garden 
technically that's still not waste. It's feeding the microbiome of the soil and therefore it's all being used. It's just not being drank by people, which makes me think sometimes, oh man, am I wasting? So I always do my washing up while Winnie is still on the stand finishing her food. And she always finishes right before I'm done and she starts yelling like I forgot her every single time. Did I forget you? Does nobody take care of you? <laughs> Poor Winnie. Poor goat. Come on. Come on. There you go. Oh, I gotta harvest the asparagus. There's a bunch over on the other side of the pond too that started coming up. We got down closer to freezing again last night. Not terribly close, but enough that I'm not ready to plant anything out yet. Enough that we had to fully close up the greenhouse. This season is such, it's always so testing, I guess, of patience, of wisdom, uh, of stewardship. I mean, for instance, like with the greenhouse, a, fr a friend of mine was in town for the market on Thursday and she came by to get some tomato plants before she was heading back um, out of state, back to where she lives. And she, uh, she said, yeah, you know, I'm starting on a really small scale with grow lights and a shelf inside. And I feel like that's hard. And she's like, and then I think, well, if I just had a greenhouse, this would be easier. And she was like, but you've really kind of cleared up that misconception with how much effort you have to put into making sure you're maintaining the temperature in your greenhouse, you know, making sure it's vented, making sure it's closed up, putting a heater in and, and trying to maintain the ideal temperature. She was like, I realized that a greenhouse isn't set it and forget it either. You know, that there's a, just a measure of taking care of things that's required, which is 100% true now I mean obviously it's easier when you have a dedicated space to do anything you know I like to do crafty stuff and it's a heck of a lot harder to do it at my kitchen table around my family versus if I had like a dedicated space to do it where I could leave things out and things like that and I think that's the benefit of the greenhouse is you have this great dedicated space and with the effort you can grow like sturdy strong plants with plenty of light whereas you know with grow lights inside you may be limited by space and it's just a different kind of hard you know it's a different kind of i don't even want to say hard it's a different kind of task that has its different kind of challenges but like i uh <clears throat> this plant this tray of beets here a lot of these down on this end got zapped the other day i had i did all of this up potting on this tray and the next morning it was cold, it was overcast. I was out doing my chores. I would normally, like normally I milk and then I come here. Um, and it's early enough in the morning that obviously like it's not, even if the sun's fully out, it's not gonna be a damage to the plants. It's not hot enough. But this particular day, it was overcast, it was kind of rainy. And so I just left the greenhouse closed up because it was pretty chilly outside. I didn't need to come open it. Went inside, start baking, start cooking. And at some point the sun came out and I just wasn't paying attention. And by the time I realized, I got out here and it was over <clears throat> 125 degrees in here. And it killed like half a tray of that. It killed several of those beets. And I'm like, how, how silly is it that I have spent, I mean, I've probably spent at least $40 this season on kerosene to run these heaters on the freezing nights maybe not that much maybe like thirty dollars still i mean like i've spent some money keeping it heat heated in here i mean we've gotten out of bed at 10 30 multiple times that we're like oh shoot it's probably getting pretty close better go better go close it up and turn the heaters on i mean we have been so vigilant to make sure it didn't freeze and then one morning of letting it get too hot and that's what that's what ended up killing plants and i'm like it does require, um, it requires paying attention. I mean, it's not an autopilot thing. Y'all, I'm pretty sure the cottage garden is going to be a place of majesty this year. With asparagus popping up all over it also. Maya was out here the other day and he's like, of course, you know, he doesn't really know the plants. And 
he looked down at all this creeping Virginia, creeping Jenny, and he's like, is that a weed? It's like, depends on who you ask. I was like, I don't think that it's a weed. He's like, do you want it like that? I was like, yeah, actually, I like it. It's going to keep the, you know, the actual weeds down. And I think that the things that I want to grow that I have planted that are perennial are just going to come up through it. I mean, you can see these cannas right here just popping up through the creeping Jenny. And uh, he's like, maybe you ought to put a little over on the other side to even it out. I just love when Jeremiah has gardening opinions because he doesn't usually pay much attention to it. So, he, I mean, beyond doing building the things I ask him to build, this is not his domain at all. This is hilarious. I feel like we could play Spot the Asparagus game. It is everywhere. I just love the fact that my, my weed in my garden is asparagus all over. I've come out here just every day and walked around through the cottage garden area with my eyes cast down to see the different things that are popping up. Um, like I've got little zinnia seedlings all over. And these are daylilies. This is uh, the hibiscus coming back right here. And then I've got like that's a nasturtium. Lots of volunteer annual things but then also the perennial stuff is all starting to peek back in. This is Again, that's another hibiscus. I was waiting for my baptisias to come up because I've got one here and I've got one over here. And that's probably my favorite plant that grows in this garden is those strawberry lemonade baptisias. They're so beautiful. I'm excited to see. Oh, look, we got little baby fruits setting on the Nanking cherries. Y'all see that? It's exciting. See our pollen, all our pine pollen. That's why, I'm, that's why I sound like this right now actually a completely gorgeous weekend day it's Easter weekend we've had a, a long weekend we got some sweet things uh, planned for our family and it's been really good and I had all the intentions to spend all day out here um, prepping getting my green stalks ready and planted and planting a bunch of stuff but there's no way if I were to try to push and, and work all day out in this, I would it would not be doing myself any favors. So I'm actually going to go back inside and spend the day inside hiding out from the pollen, which is unfortunate. But, you know, learning when to call it is something I have learned over these years because I could push through today to get a lot of work done. But if it makes me worse, it'll cost me more days later and there will be other pretty days. So I'm going to focus on feeling better today rather than trying to get the most out of a out of a sunny spring afternoon so i've just been sitting here for like 10 or 15 minutes just looking at the garden i don't want to go outside but i'm, I'm gonna have to i did think i would just pop over here and just tell you guys a few things uh, that i don't think i've shown you yet this season I am going to start doing garden tours here very soon because at this point, even though a lot of things are in transition, like a ton of the brassicas, what's left, they've started to go to seed because even though we're still getting close to freezing a lot of nights, the days are, I mean, we've been getting up to like 80 Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius during the days. So it's definitely warm, but not warm enough to actually plant out the summer things. Um, but we're doing this space a little bit differently this year for a couple reasons so i planned on establishing some more perennial stuff here and i kind of had to revert back to what we were doing because we decided to start building our house which we're gonna have to take uh, the septic pump line out through here to where the field is the, the, the drain field which is out in this pasture and yeah so we have to leave some space to run the line through here so this is not going to be super developed uh, eventually my plan is here to build like a big grape arbor right here and grow some like local varieties of grapes that do really well but um, right here we've got some potatoes which I'm not growing as many as I have oh my goodness look at this hey cutie I won't hurt them oh, man what a terrible place to lay eggs well, dang, we were just about to mulch those. I'm glad I saw her. I mean, she would, she's hollering at me now. She's gonna, 
what kill deer d birds do is they run off and they pretend like they're hurt to try to lure you away from their nest so she's over there kind of limping around right now but um we'll just have to skip that spot when we mulch these potatoes so that she can hatch her eggs out it only takes like three weeks last they've had babies in the garden which to be fair i mean i built a garden in there their home and so I try to work around them this bed would have been the better choice for her but she didn't ask me um, this is all just rutabagas and root vegetables that we're gonna put sweet potatoes over on this side and we just decided to squeak out one one row of roots here since you know we had the space prepped we'll uncover all of this as soon as any danger of frost has passed uh, so that we can plant this but everything that's going to be planted here is all very frost tender So we'll just leave this covered up until you'll see all the pollen it pulls up in the water. So gross Pop in here. Look at that I'm gonna leave it. It could use a little more ripening and the kids have been really excited to come out here and look for strawberries My plan for garden tour videos this year um, I've talked about this a little bit and I, I did a seed unboxing as a premiere just to try it out. So what a premiere is, is where you, f you record a video, you edit it, just like a normal video, like the one you're watching. But you schedule it and it publishes like an announcement that it's going to be going live at a certain time. And there's a chat that's running. And so I'm thinking that I'm going to aim to do every other week garden tours. Um, just realistically with my schedule, I think that that's what I can feasibly do. And I'm thinking that I want to have like a set time, um, probably during the weekend. I'd love some feedback. I know obviously there's no way for me to pick a time that's going to be great for everybody because people are watching all over the world. I mean, there's like different time zones and all that stuff. But um, I'm thinking it would be cool to have like a set time every other week that the Garden Tours premiere. And then that way I can be in the chat with you guys and answer questions that you may have and things like that and it would just be a fun thing that we could get to you know connect over garden tours are truly a labor of love they are very very time consuming both to film and to edit uh but it's but just as the garden's gotten so big but I, I don't know, I just kind of feel like it's the meat and potatoes of my channel. It's sort of, I mean, it's the the thing that brought the initial growth to my channel. So I, I like to do them. It just gives me the sense of getting to share my garden with all of you. I don't always, like, just the way that my mind works. I've done some videos in the past of, like, where I sit down and I write an outline and I give a lot of information. Uh, those are Those are also not they're hard to do and I'll have people sometimes be like I really miss when you used to do really detailed profiles on certain plants and I really haven't done a lot of those videos I mean I I function best in like walking through the garden and seeing things that can like trigger off the facts in my mind whenever I sit down to think okay I'm gonna teach people about gardening I'm like I don't know I don't know how to tell people how to garden so it's easier for me to do it walking through the garden so that's why I like garden tours because I can convey a lot of information information but I also love that it gives a sense of like camaraderie and gardening together and how sweet is it to get to walk a friend through your garden that cares about gardening uh, that's kind of how garden tours started for me was I didn't have just a ton of people I mean Jeremiah like I said I mean he'll he'll show interest for my sake but he has no real deep passion of his own for it he has passion for me like he loves me so he cares about what I care about I walked him through the garden the other day and just showed him all the stuff that was growing and told him the things I was seeing that are volunteering essentially gave him a garden tour and he'll he'll do that but uh, I didn't have I didn't have a huge community of gardening friends. I didn't have a lot of people that I could walk through my garden. And even if you go back to my very first garden tour, which was June of 2018. So we've been together for a minute here on this. I said, I won't bore you with all the varieties because I mean, that was my experience is when you start spouting off varieties that people's eyes would glaze over. And the comment section was like, no, tell us the varieties. And I was like, okay, I will. Uh, so it's definitely a sweet thing. And though it is, you know, I mean, it requires an investment of time. It's one worth making, but I'd like to make the most out of it. So that's why I was thinking premieres might be really fun because then we can chat together. I don't know. What do you think? What would be a good time for that for you? So this tunnel 
is as things start to you know transition we'll be harvesting like like this is a bunch of carrots they're they're relatively small right now they've got a little more time but like i've got rutabagas and um kales and of course i've picked a lot of cauliflower and broccoli and some of it's just going to seed um, as we pull these things out we'll just amend these beds and wait because this will be largely peppers in here i like growing my peppers in the high tunnel i'm not in any rush to pull any of this stuff out because i probably won't plant the peppers until like may 1st uh, i want to be thoroughly past the risk of freezing but also just past the cool nights and then that tunnel over there is just going to be filled up with flowers which is so exciting oh look at this oh the dahlias have started to come back thoroughly i told y'all the other day that i wasn't sure this is a weed a bit official weed but i don't need it in here look at this artichoke is this not so beautiful so majestic it is really liking the soil in here look i got little baby is starting we harvested lots of artichokes last year. Oh, I want to clarify this. Someone sent me a recipe for an artichoke the other day. It was like a, I don't know, reel on Instagram or something like that. If you find a recipe for garden food or for me, I mean, for anything, as long as it's not like cake, you know, <laughs> please don't, 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 don't torture me with cake recipes. <laughs> I can't eat that. But like garden food and meat, like farm to table food, if you find recipes that you think I will like, and if it is if it's vegetables or meat if it's farm to table stuff that's not bread um i'll like it i'm not picky at eater at all i love just real food in all its forms send it to me i i love that i love when you guys send me recipes i might just only heart it you know like i might not a lot of times i'll heart it and save them if i don't have time to watch them in the moment but somebody sent me a video showing like a stuffed artichoke recipe the other day and so I am saving it and eagerly awaiting for my artichokes to start producing so I can make something like that. Sweet peas and this green stalk are looking really pretty. I always tell people that they can send me their recipes. If you see funny things that are literary, I'm your girl. Like cool rock reels. Definitely like that. I've been getting a lot of rock reels since you found out that I like to collect rocks and pick up cool rocks. I've been getting a lot of that. And... Uh, and then if you ever want to enter a giveaway and you need to tag somebody i can you just use me just tag me tag away i won't enter the giveaway <laughs> i won't even look at it but i've told people that in the past so i get tagged in tons of giveaways but i'm like if you got to tag somebody to enter it you know feel free to tag my account i don't mind i get so many notifications i don't see a whole lot of them so it doesn't make a lick of difference to me but but yeah man there's so many good recipes that people share in like short format videos and I've got a little saved thing. And of course, I mean, it's great for me because I can make them and do farmer's table content and share them if, if I like it. Uh, but I've got several things right now that I need to dig in. Like I've got a lot of, my camera almost fell over. Uh, like I have a lot of spinach right now that I'd like to do something good with that. I was thinking of doing, I, I was hoping that the spinach would hold out long enough for the artichokes to come. And so I could do like a fully from the garden, like spinach artichoke choke situation but i think i may be pushing i probably need to harvest that spinach i may freeze dry the spinach that might be a good idea to be able to add to things later um actually i like that idea but if you've got some great thing like some definitely use this recipe for spinach throw that at me i love when y'all send me stuff like that it's so cool that because of technology and i know we talk a lot about the downside of technology and social media and doom scrolling and zombie scrolling and all the things but i also want to praise the good thing you know 60 years ago you would have had a little friend group that got together over tea on tuesday morning and played you know dominoes or whatever it is you know like got together and played a little game and chatted and shared recipes and stuff and maybe there would have been 10 people in that group but we get to experience the benefit of that connection like thousands deep how cool is that we get to say hey i'm having this issue do you know a solution we get to say i've got a bunch of spinach do you know what to do to use it oh i think that's cool oh i just looked out here and i realized i actually do have a big update for you guys so some months ago i told you that we were concerned because hope who was our first dairy cow we had a lot of issues like basically what we did is we tried to artificially inseminate her and whenever you artificially inseminate 
um, a lot of times you give them a, a drug that basically forces them into ovulation. And I tend to like to do things the natural way, but sometimes, you know, like, I'll, I'll try things, especially when it comes recommended from people who I feel like know more than I do about a situation. And uh, the AI did, ended up not taking for Helen or for Hope. Um, and Helen, we ended up putting her out with the bull. We got the bull right after we attempted AI. And Helen had a baby, like she got pregnant. She's already had the calf. The calf is now, you know, months old. But Hope didn't take, and Hope just kept going back into heat for months, and we ended up, and it was like she was almost always in heat, we ended up having to have the vet come out again because she had developed some, like, cyst on her cervix or something, and we had to get her treated for that, and there was some concern there for a little while that Hope maybe wasn't going to get pregnant again. And we've been watching her and watching her, and the conversation came up, you know, a few months ago where we were like, you know, at some point we're going to have to call it. Maybe do we want to intervene again? Do we want to try to do something? But at some point, if a cow just simply isn't getting rebred and therefore she's just not making milk, you have to, you have to consider the contribution to the farm. And, at, you know, I mean, you just have to make business decisions when it comes to these animals. And I know for a lot of people, that's really hard to hear. And, you know, inevitably somebody always pipes up You're, you know, you're treating your animals badly and we're not, we treat our animals very good actually uh, but we still have a bottom line as far as the cost of our operation and we're more lenient than a lot of people are when it comes to that because we make our money off making content so I feel like animals get more of a reprieve on our farm than they could if we were actually really trying to just run a, a lucrative farm business but you know we kind of had the discussion of like at some point if hope is not able to get bred again we're gonna have to look at what we're gonna do with her about a week and a half ago I noticed that her udder started filling up and it has filled up a lot since then so Hope is indeed rebred and looking by the looks of it I would guess that she will be having the next two weeks would be generous I would say maybe even the next week um, of course I'm not very good at guessing that so she, she could be another month out I don't think so I, I really think she looks close even what made me think about this is she's standing at the top of the pasture I can't even show you with the camera because it's not going to pick it up up, but I can see how big her udder looks from here so I think we're getting pretty close and so that's really good news I'm so relieved because even though I do have to make business decisions and we have had to cull animals um, it still makes me sad because I do actually really care about them I it, and so when people are like oh the way you treat your animals it actually kind of hurts my heart because I'm sad too but I still have to make responsible decisions for the you know the greater good of the entire farm the other up update is we got our survey back two days ago so we've turned that in and we are just waiting for our final day and as soon as we are able to like sign on starting our house we will be breaking ground like immediately after we have our concrete guy like lined up ready to go to get the foundation poured and um, and yeah so we're as soon as we get the go-ahead I mean we're hitting the ground running we've got things lined up and the idea is, you know, when you're building a house, you want to get it into the dry as soon as possible because you're putting things up. You don't, you don't want it to have a lot of weather on it. Um, so it's going to, when it starts, it's going to happen really, really fast. It's felt, it's felt like a lot of hurry up and wait the last two months. I kind of lost a little bit of my, my zing for it because it was like, oh, we're about to start in two weeks. And it was like, actually, no, we've got to wait another month. Uh, but we got the paper back two days ago. It's about to get moving super excited just waiting just a little bit more waiting and then we're going to start having very very visible progress lots of progress has happened but it's nothing you can actually see so anyway those are our exciting updates uh i'd love your feedback on the garden tour thing and of course any recipes you ever want to share with me i absolutely love that thank you guys for hanging out with me today and i hope you're saying i hope you're staying well in the pollen onslaught I bless you. Until next time.